Few words like retro echo amongst the hollowed grounds of gaming forums. Those who yearn for better days for nostalgia is a powerful force. In video games, this element of nostalgia is especially prominent because games are a fully loaded time capsule of sorts. Old games don't look as good as new games. Old games have weird sounds and new games sound fancy. It's fairly easy to pick out a game made in the 1980s, 90s, and 2000s and so on, and identify what generation made this technology possible. And this is cool. I mean, it lets video games differentiate themselves from other mediums. So when I ask you the question, what is a retro game? What is the cutoff between retro and simply antiquated? I assume you have an answer in mind. Now, in my experience, it seems like the answer is usually any game console that was made before the time you were a teenager. So if you're in your 20s, a PS1 or a Nintendo 64 was the last retro console. If you're in your 30s, it might be an SNES, and so on and so forth. I'm generalizing, of course, but this often seems to be the case. But it's the words of retro, old, vintage, modern. The fact that they don't have a clear definition, that fascinates me. And today, I just kind of wanted to look at that. Beyond purely aesthetic features, the factor of time is obviously the clear driving force of what is retro. A game simply looking dated is not enough to have it resonate on that nostalgic level. For most of my youth, the answer to what is retro felt clear-cut amongst all demographics and age groups. Pixel art and 2D systems were retro, 3D was not. Even as a kid, I knew that this was an old game, this was a new game. Even if they were only separated by a few years in development time, it made sense. It was simple, but not foolproof. For the purposes of general communication, though, it worked. Video games were becoming a much larger entertainment medium. Unlike in the 70s or the 80s, it wasn't uncommon at all for a 20-plus year old to still be playing video games, as they said. The stigma of an adult playing video games was wearing off, and the market reflected that. People wanted to repair their older machines or buy games for these older boxes. I'm not gonna talk about PCs and this because th th that's, that's a whole other story. Many independent developers wanted to draw inspiration from their own nostalgic memories. By the mid-2000s, pixel art was cool again, and by 2010, it was everywhere. Retro was a defined art style and type of game. And I'm sure you've seen all the merch that has arose from this subculture. The retro vibes, the NES shirts, the SNES throwbacks, it's all retro. But here's the thing. So, the first retro throwback I remember is the PC title Cave Story. Now that game released in 2004, which was 17 years ago. A game that is trying to evoke the past released well into the past. 17 years before Cave Story was 1987, which was definitely peak pixel art days. This means that Cave Story, the retro throwback, is now as old to us as it was to what it was throwing back to. With this in mind, I think it's easy to say that the PS1 and the Nintendo 64 and the Saturn, those are definitely retro, because I mean, if these were retro back then, these gotta be retro by now, right? I mean, we've seen classic versions of these consoles, anniversaries, and plenty of indie games that emulate the PSX style. And these are all hallmarks of becoming retro, right? But some consider newer machines than even these to be retro as well. Go on to GameStop's website and even the original Xbox, the GameCube, and PS2 are all listed under retro gaming. For some, this might be blasphemous, but consider that these boxes are 20 years old, and 20 years before 2000. 2001 would be 1981, a time before the NES even hit the American market. Now, we don't see developers going out of their way to emulate this style, not yet at least, and I think there's a good reason. If you define retro games as how they look rather than how far away they released, well, some of these games actually hold up fairly well. If they release today, they might just be a bad-looking modern game. In a few years, this might change but right now, nobody is making a PS2-style game. And you might be thinking, but who 
cares? This is all just words, fancy definitions from the fancy definition book. It's all up to interpretation, and none of this really matters. And for the most part, I agree. But sometimes, these words can have an effect on other things. If retro gaming is defined as a market value, well, that matters. Pricing in used games is entirely defined on rarity and demand, and that demand follows a fairly predictable pattern. Immediately after a game console releases, its price will stay about the same. Over time, it begins to fall, and eventually it's replaced by something new, and the price plummets. This continues for about a decade, until finally the the kids who grew up with these boxes have their own disposable income. Then the machines become nostalgic, and demand rises, and so do the prices. In this sense, once demand surges due to nostalgia, these are retro machines by the only metric that really matters to the industry, money. And it's not just used games of which this matters. Retro titles are peak remaster remake material. The ground up remake? Completely redoing the game because so much time has passed? Well, I guess you could argue that's retro. And sure, we've seen full remakes of PS1 titles and now GameCube titles, but now we're getting to a point where 2006-2007 releases like Pokemon Diamond and Pearl are getting full remakes. And as weird as that could sound, this could make the original DS a retro machine. While for me, that feels weird to say, timeline-wise, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, the 2007 release date of this game is as far away from us now that the original Doom was to Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. And by 2007, Doom was undeniably a retro game. Things get weirder when you go back uh, a little bit further. I mean, the Xbox 360, a console I would have a hard time ever imagining as retro, did come out before this. It was 16 years ago in 2005. And 16 years before the Xbox 360, that was 1989. That was the age of Golden Axe and DuckTales and Bonk's Adventure. 21 years ago, the PS2 released in 2000. 21 years before 2000 was 1979. So it was Atari 2600 days or Asteroids in the Arcade. Any further back and we're basically at the prehistory of video games. Consider that when the word retro started to enter the public consciousness in the 90s, that often referred to games that were less than a decade old. The way I imagine it, once demand spikes, once a full remake is made, then that thing is retro. So the PS3, the DS, the 360, the Wii, th those are retro. And going back beyond that, you get a style that is emulated because it's not just old, it's so old, it's cool. It's vintage. Any older than that, the pixel art of the SNES and the Genesis in the NES, those have already seen their resurgence come and seemingly end. I guess by today's standards, a time when even the emulation of this style is past its prime, I guess you'd have to call it antique. Something that is so old, its nostalgia itself could, in theory, one day see a nostalgic resurgence. For me though, the wackiest concept is that a kid that was 11 when the PS4 launched, well, they would be 18 now. They would be out of high school, they would have a job and pay taxes, and if for some reason they wanted to spend disposable income on the console of their youth, well, that would be a PS4, a box that still sold in stores. By today's standards, an adult could see the PS4 as a retro machine. Granted, the nostalgia likely would have drained away because this is a box they've had to deal with for eight years or whatever. But nonetheless, it's a real possibility. I suppose the main message of this video, the main thing you should take away though, is that if you feel nostalgia for something, if you want to recapture those memories, odds are a lot of other people are thinking about the same thing at the same time. And that means demand rises and prices go up, and now the PS3 is an expensive box again.